Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the October 9th Radnor Township School District Finance Committee meeting. And we'd like to get right underway with administrative remarks. Uh, and I'd like to welcome back Ms. Deco. Thank you. It's good to see your face. And, just, and everything else on you. <laughs> and your foot. <laughs> and your foot. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So welcome back. Um, so I just wanted to take a moment to answer a couple questions that Sarah asked at the last meeting that I wasn't at. And one of them has to do with um, the library books. I guess there was a um, number of library books that were on for disposal sale. Um, and Sarah, you had asked a question about why were there so many books. And the librarians are continually purging their collections. Um, they get rid of books periodically quite often at the beginning of the school year the end of the school year we see to see a lot of books that are being disposed of whenever possible we do donate donate those to um, a, any group that we know that can use them or we also work with a group called students helping students um, and they actually come to the campus and pick up the books so that's a routine thing that occurs and then there was a question regarding the number of musical instruments uh, the curriculum department teaching and learning uh, they actually have a five-year cycle to replace instruments. If we can keep them longer than that, we do. We do rent some of our instruments, so they do take a pretty good beating at the elementary, middle school, and high school level. They're um, carted around a lot, and um, they handle, they travel through the hands of many students. So sometimes they last longer than five years. It depends on what kind of instrument they are. Um, we do sell them whenever we possibly can and donate. If we, if we can. We also use them for parts if, if that's something possible, um, but we're constantly looking at those on a five-year cycle. Thank you. Uh, those questions are also posted. The answers to those questions are also posted um, on the website. And that's all I have. Thank you so much. Uh, with that, I'd like to move right into public comment. And I'd ask if you have something to comment on. If you haven't already signed in at this side, please do so. Welcome, Mrs. Sherry. Good afternoon, Judy Sherry, Governor's Circle, Newtown Square. If I heard correctly, some instruments were sold. And I'm wondering where income from the sale of something like that is on the um, financial statements. So that'd be my first question. Um, does the board believe that an effective way to control the public and limit meaningful public participation is to wait until the last minute and dump lots of information online so there is no time for the public to formulate a response to its questions. Once again, questions that were asked weeks ago are now posted today online, as far as I know. I looked yesterday. I couldn't find anything. Uh, and so what that means is that for the public to take a look at these questions and answers and really see, well, did this answer my question? Was this what I asked? You don't have time to do it. So in the case of the administration and the board, you give yourselves lots of latitude to answer a question, weeks, sometimes a month in between times. And yet the public's supposed to read the, read the questions, read the answers, and come forward to a meeting and respond. And as my grandmother used to say, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So you should apply the same standards that you put on yourselves to the public. Second question about this. Do board members review the questions and responses published online to see if they are accurate? Number three. Who takes responsibility for answering specific questions? Will you list the administrator or board member accountable for the response? And the last question is, why doesn't the board follow the guidelines recommended in its policy on public participation? On a different topic, why won't the administration send an amended Title IX financial form to the state for the two years when the Football Booster Club failed to report its contributions? Isn't the booster component important information for understanding whether Radner is fairly funding interscholastic sports? And also related to the football, 
Has the Football Booster Club submitted its contributions for the last required Title IX report? And last time the question was listed actually in August, what is the total number of hours and cost of hiring Fox Rothschild for the investigation of a board member? The response was, the district does not plan to discuss this matter any further. Is it necessary to do a right to know request for this information? Will the cost and hours be enumerated at that time, or does the board consider these costs secret information? And finally, um, the last question is kind of around the um, topic that I mentioned before about the wild summer weather and the resulting costs to the school district. Um, and so, uh, and how the township was doing conveying water. This sort of overlaps to facility, I realize. But when I asked the question, did the district have any issues from flooding as a result of a storm in August, of storms in August, and what is the dollar amount to fix the damages, if any? The response was, district property did sustain some damage due to the flooding. At the current time, a dollar amount is not available. So my new questions are, was there water infiltration from flooding in any of the district's buildings? If so, which buildings were infiltrated, and what is the estimated damage structurally and financially? Was there any other property damaged from flooding? If so, what's the estimated cost? And what's the total cost to the district for water damage to buildings and properties? Will you provide this information to the township? Because I know that the township is preparing a statement, and this probably will be necessary to be part of the township's emergency declaration. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any public comment? Welcome, Mrs. Spurtle. Thank you. Cindy Spurtle, 106 Valley Forge Terrace, Wien. I too would like to comment on the way that the answers to our questions and comments are being handled. I looked on Sunday when I sat down to review the agenda and the attachments to do my homework for the committee meetings and there were no answers to any of the questions we had asked. August was still posted and I looked again yesterday and, and September was not up. And, so when I returned from a full day today, around 3 o'clock, I found out that the answers were finally posted with not much time to review. I was able to look through a couple of them, but um, the new policy doesn't seem to be fair to the public. There, and also, have the board had a chance to review the answers before they were posted so that they agree with what the um, staff and the administration has answered to these questions. Uh, as far as the, um, I was able to look at one or two of the questions, and one was a question that Ms. Sherry had been asking about the, and I had also the total number of hours and the cost of hiring Fox Rothschild for the investigation that took place over the summer. And there was an answer as to the total amount paid, and but not the total number of hours. Now, if I go back, and take time to go back to that meeting. I presume there'll be a dollar fee, uh, dollars per hour that the firm charged, but was not able to do that because the answers didn't were not forthcoming until later this afternoon. So only half of that question has been answered. The other question I had that I've asked uh, for a while, and that is the cost of full day kindergarten. I did go back per the answer to the August questions, to the video uh, of the curriculum committee in August, and I don't believe that the cost, the, I call it handling costs, the annual cost, startup costs were mentioned by Mr. Rubarczyk, but I do not believe that um, we're, we have yet to know what the additional cost is to the school district of the full day kindergarten. Thank you. Is there any public comment? Okay, seeing none, we're going to move on to the approval of minutes. Uh, if everyone had a chance to read them, are we good? Yep. Great, super. So that was quick. Let's move right into our first agenda item. 
which is a series of items that will be on the board agenda at the end of October for items to be sold, disposed of, or donated, and some, uh, some uh, contract for approval, and then uh, the 1920 budget calendar. Michelle, do you have any information you want to provide with regard to any of those? Um, I can just tell you that um, the technology department has been doing a lot of cleaning out. That's why you see a lot of technology items there. Um, we talked just briefly about this today in our administrative cabinet meeting. If you're not familiar with what the district does with laptops and desktops, computers that we have that are old, um, whenever we're able to recycle those and, and um, donate them to our refurbishing club, we do that. The club then refurbishes those laptops and donates them to needy groups. Uh, these laptops that are listed on here are well past their prime. Uh, they really don't have any value and would not be able to be refurbished. So in that case, we then recycle those computers. In terms of the golf bags, we did have a moisture problem up at the high school in one storage area, and that's why those need to be disposed of. They will not be donated or sold. They will be disposed of. Um, in regards to the contracts, um, there is the analytical software um, that we have to approve and the Pennsylvania Economy League. I believe that Mr. or Dr. Barczyk had given each of us um, a scope of work this evening. You have that in front of you. He's available this evening for questions if anyone has questions. I know there were some questions a week or so ago about what kinds of things they would look at, including if they would look at other districts. So Dr. Barczyk, if you would join us. Dr. Barczyk, while you sit up here, um, you know, Mike or Sarah, Patty, do you have any, you know, questions for Tony about this? I, I have one question, but I'll hold mine till the end. Okay. I have a couple. Sure, go ahead. And I don't, I think they're mostly clarification questions, and if you don't have them today, the full board meeting is fine for an answer. Um, I noticed in some of the other research that Pell has done, they call it an update review versus a full new review, I guess, and I just wondered, is there a difference, and is this an update to our 2014 analysis, or is this a whole new one? This would be an update to the 2015. Okay. It would not be the full, the full uh, barometer of a uh, demographic study. Okay. From so, end so then, but it pretty sorry. much, when talking to the gentleman at Pen, uh, the Pennsylvania Economy League, the the only aspect of that is missing is they generally start from a zero base and make their way forward, where they're starting with our base numbers from 2015 and making updates to those numbers. Perfect. I wanted to make sure we weren't paying to redo work they'd already Correct. done. Correct. Nope. And are these the same um, analysts who looked at us, the la did our review last time? So we have you know? um, in your packet that you received in the proposal. What uh, I, I missed, I saw their, their um, resumes, but I there, didn't Yes, tell Charlie Waters, he was the gentleman who conducted the 2015 update. Okay. Mary Jane... I'm going to forget the last name. It's uh, in your pack. Thompson. She is um, new. She's done, but has been in demographic studies for a number of years. Okay. Um, just participating with another firm up in um, near East Stroudsburg. Okay. Awesome. Um, one key point that I saw um, when I was looking through the, the scope, and I just make sure it's not been updated here. So in the general characteristics and community development yes. item B is the trend in housing units from 1990 to 2010. Is that because that's all that's available? Because of the census. Okay. Correct. I just wanted to make sure because it seemed to me like there have been, I mean, it's, it's key to us that we've had a change in the type of enrollment now that we have full day kindergarten, and I think that may have affected some of our public's And decisions. that was so the reason for sure. the update in 2015 was to right. make Get sure that we had encompassed the full day kindergarten okay. piece. When speaking with um, Pell today, actually, I asked him about that trend in housing units, although it goes to 2010. He said we, he will access the township, depart, uh, township building to make sure that they get the number of real estate transactions and um, permits that are occurring on current housing for full flips, not for... for a step ahead of me, because I was going to say, surely there's some other information they can mm -hmm. use. That's great. Okay. Um, no, that was it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Is your question related to, like we talked about last night? 
I don't. I'll leave it to, no. About, about other. No. Mine's not. Oh, okay. So since you, because we talked a little last night, Susan and I, and I think we had kind of similar questions. I think you touched base on those. Um, other school districts and things that are going on around us. This is an introspective look in terms of internal to the district. Mm -hmm. What about external look? around other communities in our area, especially as we were talking last night and noting the, uh, the Lower Marion School District and their pretty major change in population and right. what's driving that and why is that not coming here? He would not look outside the district in that regard. The only thing that he would refer to and make alignment with is other demo if they had a demographic study done uh -huh. and just seeing what they're looking at just the trends that are happening next door. But he wouldn't be utilizing that to build our presentation or our study so if the purpose of this study is for us to contemplate our three elementary schools in our current which is what I believe this is around the that process, initiative yes. of that mm -hmm. of looking at that I, I do think we need to incorporate something in terms of looking at other districts in our area like us and what their trends are looking like and why so I spoke with three different companies, and I wish I brought the names of the other ones. The other one, there was one in South Carolina, another one in uh, Northern Jersey, and I just wanted to see, get a comparison, whether they look at other districts in the same, the way that Pell does, mm -hmm. and not actually doing the party, making them part of the study, but actually making alignments to see what's going on trends, and all three of them were similar in their aspect of how they evaluate neighboring districts and looking at the trends as compared to actually taking data and information and incorporating it into our study. So how does that, how does that manifest itself? What does that look like? So they look at Lower Marion and they say they've seen a population growth across K to 12 of this, this, and this, and here's why? And that'll be just a kind of a footnote at the bottom of uh, our report? Yeah, I mean, yes, it would be. It would be those birth, those, um, because the birth rates that they're looking at to determine, um, you know, the, the incoming children who will be coming to our schools, along with those housing, the, the housing markets in regards to what aspect they're having an effect on surrounding areas, not just Radnor. And they said so, they would, there would be an opportunity, my understanding, for them to uh, interview administrators for administrators, us. Administrators, principals, and, and the board. And we could have opened up the board yes. members. So there are questions we could ask them that is as correct. part of this process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, if we're going to use this to make decisions about our elementary schools, whether it's as draconian as doing a, a redistricting or, or not, you know, it could be as simple as some upgrades in certain buildings to handle what we've got there. I think we, we need to understand what else is going on. You know, because our, 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 you know, birth rates in Radnor can't be much different than birth rates in Lower Marion versus birth rates in TE versus, you know what I mean? Like, so I wouldn't expect that to be the that dramatic, dramatic different. That's yep. not what's driving it. So it's we, we really do need to understand what's driving it. I know, as we were even talking briefly last night, is it apartments? Well, we're not building a whole lot of new apartments. Did they really build a lot of apartments? Is that really what happened? So I... Yeah. I'm just saying, I'd like yeah, to see it. And Lower Marion. I could show them to you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll know it, because they're, um, I mean, they're just next door to my, my oncologist, so it's like. I'm yeah. just <laughs> saying, yeah. I, I, we should put that, get that in oh, some yeah. sort sure. of a written yeah. format so that we can use that to either, A, have discussions with our township yeah. to understand if they've got anything on a horizon that we should actually be, be worried about of. or consider. No, I agree with you, because they did that right over at 30. They knocked down that exactly. medical building, and they're putting, putting up a, apartment. A so, thing. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be 50 plus, but right. how long is that going to last? But, and that's all yeah. fine. I'm not saying it's yeah. bad stuff, but they're no, all important but, things that we need to yeah. consider if we're going to do a full eval. I, I think the question, and Sarah, the question, um, Tony, is that if Pell is not able to answer that either because we didn't put it into the scope of work that we're requesting from them or they're just not able to do this is there an entity out there and it may be some other group doesn't mean we shouldn't be doing this don't get me wrong but you know if we have a very specific question that we're trying to get answered that might inform this board about what we could expect the future to look like with regard to population mm -hmm. Is there an entity out there that is able to evaluate what's happened in Lower Marion and evaluate it, what's going on in Tredifferent, if they're having a population boom or not, and are we 
poised to be in the same situation because my understanding is that not only has Lower Marion seen a huge increase, but they were not pro projecting it for, for several years. They weren't thinking that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And now, not only did it happen, it's projected to continue to happen. And I don't sit on their board, and I don't listen to their demographic studies, so I can't say for sure the reasons. Um, I, don't, I, I do believe that the apartment buildings played a role, but I believe that there are some other factors. Mm -hmm. So if Pell can't answer that, which is, again, maybe there's not a scope that they can do, we may need to ask them who can answer that question, because I do think it's. Well, might it be Lower Marion? I, I don't know. That's what I, I was going to ask. Yeah, can we I, ask maybe, Lower Marion yeah, for that question? I can always. something you want to reach, yeah. reach out. Okay, yeah. So yeah. You I may have to have some understanding. This is, right. Sure. So, and this, again, this is one piece of data that's important sure. for us to update as we look at the capacity. Yes. It's just one piece. Um, you know, I, from the understanding of the conversations I've had with Tony, it doesn't sound like they do the comparative. That's just something that they don't normally do. Correct. We could go for a lot of them. Right. None of them do seem not to do, do it. That, but, that I'm finding. But we could certainly reach out. Um, and yes. if, if we're not successful reaching out, we could look at for what other avenues we could do that. But we could, can we add that piece to the, mm -hmm. to the review to look at, yes. you know, to look to see what's happening at our neighboring districts and reach out administratively? Yes. So I don't know if you had other questions. I have two. So one question I have is actually a follow up to Sarah's. Uh, Tony, regarding the trend in housing units. Why is the housing unit trend tied to the census? I mean, the houses are here. The units are here. So if you could get a clarification from Pell mm -hmm. as to why the housing units themselves are tied to the census from eight years ago. Sure, that's, I will. I, I, maybe it's just a clarification of what they mean by that. Um, the other question, and I do want to point out that in as much as this is a piece of information that will fold into the elementary school utilization, this Pell <coughs> study very clearly says they are not going to make, yeah. they are not going to inform us at, a, at an elementary building level. This will be trends for the entire township, not school specific. And they, there was a whole big blurb in here is yeah. the reason that they won't they won't be doing that. Correct. I just wanted to remind everyone. Right. And we, then, can I just add sure, the, the 2015, we asked specifically that they do, that they, in that update, that they did it because of the full day kindergarten, right. which they, in talking with, again with um, the gentleman at Pennsylvania Economy League, they do it, but there's no guarantees. But then we went back and looking at the numbers, you know, they were about 5% varied from three to five percent in where they were and their projections to what the, where the schools stand at this current time so they were right about there he said but there's unfortunately there's no scientific method you don't know where kids are going to end up landing in an attendance a specific attendance zone within a school district right. okay so the only the only question i had to do uh had actually has to do with the engagement letter where they said that they're prepared to begin the study by mid-october and they would expect to issue the draft within five months. Later in the report, they said that if there's a significant delay to the start, that perhaps it would be a delay to the, to the five-month reporting. Mm -hmm. And so I would just like to get clarification, given that this won't technically be approved until our October 23rd business meeting. Correct. Um, you know, that that two or three weeks of delay, I mean, it would mean they would be starting at the end of October rather than mid-October. Right, so when I spoke uh, to Jerry. I would Jerry, like confirmation that's not, not going to seriously, it, I don't think it should significantly at all delay this report, but I would like, I would appreciate having confirmation of that. And I can get that, because when speaking with him today, he said there would be no delay. The report would still be on time for the, the later part of fall, early winter, and the conclusion of it, and getting the report out within five months. Okay, great. So. so. As long as that's the case, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm comfortable. Is everyone comfortable with moving this ahead to the full board? So, so five months meaning March? Yeah. November, December, yeah. January, February, March. So the beginning of March, the full report. You'll be getting preliminary information. Oh, preliminary prior information to prior to that, yes. Okay. Definitely. All right. So did, if you could also get a clarification on when you think they would have some draft information, because, again, there's sure. other... There's other work being done this year that this will be a piece of information to inform whatever it is that the district, you know, the district priority project. I can have all that before, prior to the board meeting. Great. Thank so. you so much. Okay. So I think we're good to go with approving this. Um, let's see. I thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Michelle, the budget calendar, do you want, I, I do have just a question, a clarification on it, if you don't mind. Sure. 
Um, does it, has everyone seen it? Did, did anyone else have any questions? Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to clarify um, the bids that is this bid openings and solicit for bids in the early March and opening of bids. What bids are you in? Is that a yearly thing, certain bids? <laughs> it's, it's something we do every year. We kind of phase them. So um, we'll do our sports bids and we'll do um, our bids for art supplies and nursing supplies and custodial supplies, musical instruments. There's a multi number of bids that we do. Okay. So we try to break them up so that we're not doing them all at once. It can become a little overwhelming if we do that. So. Okay. Did anyone else have any questions? Sarah? Now you got my question. Oh, yeah, the bids. <laughs> um, I, you know, I just, I'm assuming that coming off of last year where we had lots of snow days, you have some built-in wiggle room between deadlines and meeting dates so that if we have inclement weather, we're okay. We do. We have some, some wiggle room, and um, we always seem to get things done on time, even if we are running like a week or two behind schedule. So okay, um, great. the calendar adjusts for that. All right, super. Thank you. I think we can move on to the next item. Well, just oh, sorry. real quick, the, on here it says that the, the states notified us of the Act 1, which is, oh, that's I mean, right. I already read it. It's 2-3. The, three, the right? state did notify us of Act 1. I, do, I made a note on this calendar to check the dates because um, the way the budget calendar reads they notified us right on the same date or before they were supposed to, and I know that that's not accurate, so I, there will be some changes probably to those dates. I'll just double check those. But the Act 1 index for 1920 is 2.3%. Right. It was 2.4% for the 7 or the 1819 mm -hmm. budget year. Okay, great. All righty. Well, thank you. Uh, let's see. We're going to move right into the next item agenda, which is the audio for the high school. Auditorium, Mr. Bechtold, Mr. Dietzler, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me for this opportunity to talk about the audio uh, in the auditorium, specifically the microphones. Um, so essentially I'll start with what's going on with the FCC right now. Um, the wireless microphones that we use are similar to walkie-talkies, so um, there's a low amplitude uh, radio signal communicated between the two. You could think of them as walkie-talkies. Um, cellular phones, devices, uh, car radios, as well as GPS use obviously huge towers, high amplitude radio waves. Um, Congress directed the FCC to auction off more frequencies due to the rising number of cell phones and devices and laptops. Um, and as a result, the FCC held a, an auction in January 2017 in which um, they sold off the frequencies that our wireless microphones work on. Um, T-Mobile won the most bandwidth um, and uh, that was the result of the auction that they held. And uh, not only in approximately a year and a half it will be illegal to use those frequencies anymore, we will also might start picking up people's cell phone conversations or just hear fuzz, unfortunately, because of the larger broadcast nature of cell phone signals. Um, so as a result, uh, we have to look into replacing the wireless microphones. Uh, we are not alone in this at all. There are theaters, concert venues, uh, universities, other school districts that suddenly had their microphones become paperweights in, the, in a year and a half, unfortunately, uh, due to the FCC auction. Uh, there's a, a video I found that is actually on slide four that would uh, provide a really great summary. It's about a minute and a half, and it's actually produced by one of the um, microphone manufacturers. We'll see if it loads up. Yeah. You can just... Yes, that's the range. So this lack of audio will be what will happen when the microphone... <laughs> <laughs> It's very visual, too. Yeah, you got it on your cell phone, yeah. So you're seeing, what you're seeing is uh, the, the range that most wireless microphones work at um, is in the green and yellow bar combined, but they took the yellow bar and auctioned that off. Now, there will be some TV channels that will take those frequencies as well. Um, 
But in a nutshell, essentially what, what happens now is any microphone that operates in the same range as these cell phones becomes useless, unfortunately. So that's in about 39 months, that's when it'll happen. Uh, they'll start broadcasting in these ranges. And that's us. That red bar filling right now is where all, all our wireless microphones are operating right now. I wish it was between 653 and 663, but it's not. Got it. I, I can summarize it pretty nicely here in that um, we have a unique opportunity because the question might arise, well, why do we need to buy the microphones now uh, if we have a year and a half? Microphone manufacturers are offering temporary rebates for these uh, products that will become paperweights. So we have an opportunity with the current inventory that we have. By trading it in, we could save up to $3,000 um, if we trade them in to uh, purchase new microphones. The one catch is that the rebate program, most of them are ending October 31st, 2018. So you have to purchase the new microphones before October 31st, 2018 in order to take advantage of that rebate. After October 31st, we still will need more microphones and we will be out $3,000 we could have saved um, is how I can summarize it for you tonight. And that's why we're here. So I have one question, but does sure. anybody else have questions? Well, mine's a little broader. What about el elsewhere outside of the high school music program in the district? I mean, obviously, we probably have middle other school. middle school music program, but what about our maintenance crew? Do we use any other devices that are use, in this We don't use anything range? for the maintenance crew. We would be checking with the other schools mm -hmm. to see what their what they're using, because I do not know what they're using off the top of my head. Okay. So whatever we end up doing, I would suggest if, you know, volume discount applies and we're going to have to do it anyway, we should understand the whole. Yep. My question is one of the, um, you know, it's a fire sale, we're going out of business, and then next week the sale gets better. So I'm not saying that this isn't <laughs> legitimate, but I guess my question is, is there a way to put in a clause in the purchasing that says, you know, if they drop their prices precipitously in the next whatever it is, six months to a year, will they meet that because we gave them back the equipment earlier? They may not, but it just seems like something worth trying to negotiate. It's a pragmatic question, yeah. Well, definitely something we can ask as okay. we seek um, quotes. So, so my question is really, um, uh, 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 how much are we talking about that we need to spend now to replace the system that you are talking about? A adding in the fact that, Todd, you need to look into the rest of the buildings and take into consideration patties. But at least right. in terms of what you were presenting today, we're saving $3,000 on how much of a bill? So we're, uh, I can speak to the high school's microphone inventory. And I would say, um, combining what we use in the black box facility as well as the auditorium, a uh, very rough estimate I could give you is approximately $21,000 to replace all the wireless microphones. As part of the new sound system we, we already have in place, we purchased four microphones whose bandwidths are good. They are fine. We do not have to replace those. Um, so that would be a rough estimate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're talking about saving about 15% roughly. Okay. Mm -hmm. All righty. Um, okay, so you are looking for us for... Michelle, tell us what you're looking for, Todd, what you're looking for from us tonight. We ultimately would like to get something on the board agenda for the end of this month to get approved. Uh, so Brian and the high school and wherever else we would need it, we can get that purchase done before October 31. Now, I thought, I, I didn't understand that the rebates were from the manufacturer. I actually thought they were from, from the government, but it, I could easily be mistaken. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's from, the, uh, it's from the manufacturers. That's why they can put a, put a date whenever they want it to, okay. to end. Yeah, the rebates. All righty. So. And, and the reason we would be looking for this month, obviously for the rebates, but this was actually in the capital plan for the next fiscal year. That's what year. I was just right. going to ask. So we need, we're moving it up to try to save the money. That's why we would need the board vote. Sure. To do okay. That. Are we comfortable with bringing this to the board? So they really capital? $21,000? I mean, because usually capital is based on the individual purchase and it has a threshold closer to $5,000. It's wrapped in with some other improvements at the at the. Um, auditorium up at the high school but, yeah, the but still you normally wouldn't of. capitalize something like a microphone when like this I mean they're individually purchased what's an individual uh, 21,000 for all of them I assume there's a lot how many are there They're approximately um, about a thousand dollars a piece because with each microphone you get the pack that transmits um, and I'm thinking in terms of a theater show um, the pack that transmits um, that you put in a pocket and then up at the board the soundboard 
that's where the receivers are that take the signal in. Yeah. Um, part of the reason it's more of a package deal instead of individuals is because you get them in the same frequency band um, and also with the antennas that will match them. So essentially, um, each microphone pack, you can think of it as a library having a certain amount of books in it. And each library has a different amount of books. You can't fit all the books in one library, if that makes sense. So you buy them all um, in one band so they can operate together on the same antennas that we place in, in the So it's the a auditorium. single system with tentacles. That's, that's a great way to put it, yes. Okay. Yeah. Then it makes sense that it's capital. Because otherwise, to me, that's expense. It doesn't. Right. But, but if, it's, if you're buying it as a mm -hmm. Synchronized system, whole, yeah. yeah and I mean, it's I just know. modular, then I get it. Yeah. yeah, I remember when we bought the first wireless mics in the district when I was in middle school, and we did it, and the most you could have at a time was four, because that was <laughs> the technology was only, could only old, they you're could old. only deconflict <laughs> four. I know. We'll they, season, they, they could only right. deconflict I'm four sorry. at a time, so now you're up to 20, so yeah, right. that's good. Right. Can, can I just ask, do, do we have any reassurance, I mean, obviously nobody can control the government, but... What do we have any reassurances that what we're buying now is going to work for the question. lifespan of the equipment we're buying? Um, no, because we're at the whim of the government. However, I can say in my reading, I, I've researched it and said where where might the FCC strike next? And they're in the gigahertz range. They see, uh, microphones operate in the megahertz range. Um, you may recall when uh, I guess it was in 2009, 2010. If you had an older TV that took analog antenna signals, you may remember them saying, "Guess what? That's not going to work anymore." This is a similar thing. But um, I, uh, in asking some of my fellow sound folks, they seem confident that it's going to be in the gigahertz range next time, which might affect cordless phones, the, the old school ones we have in our houses. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. All right, great. So, um, if you know if everyone's in agreement, I'd like to just move that along and thank you both very much for being here. Appreciate it. Of course, it. thank you. Super. All righty. Oh, sorry, this is a question for Michelle. So, if this is something that's being pulled forward in capital, are we going to fund it out of one of the capital funds, or are we looking to fund it out of Fund Ten? Um, we haven't really decided. Mike. We haven't decided that yet because we don't have a total cost. Um, the amount of money that was in the capital fund for improvements up at the high school included things other than just the microphones at the, um, at the, in the auditorium. So it, it may be a combination or more than likely it will all come out of the general fund because we know we have some excess funds there that we're not going to be spending. Okay. In this year? In this year. Yeah, well, so that brings me to a question that I had asked when you were out about where are we in this year. So maybe we can get a little update on where you think we're going to end projection coming out of last year. We're when I say this year, we're really meaning the looking at the audit, going through our audit cycle for the 2017-18 school year. Mm -hmm. That's where the funds are going to come from? No, they can't come from 17-18 because that year is already oh, closed. You've closed it. So it will come out of the 18-19 budget. Um, but there are some things that we had anticipated purchasing in 18-19 out of the general fund budget that now we know we're not going to have to purchase. I see. And okay. I realize it is only October and we're very early into the fiscal year, uh, but things do change in terms of what you budgeted for back in December, um, and now it's 10 months later and, and things have changed. Okay, thank you. All right, great. Thank you both very much for being here. Um, all righty, Michelle, the performance audit. If you could give us a little background and talk, walk us through the, uh, the two findings from the performance audit that was done by the state. So the performance audit that is included in your packet, um, the performance audit is an audit that is prepared by the Department of the Auditor General. You, if you've had a chance to look at it, you can see that it's very formatted. There's lots of graphs and things on pages one through nine. Those, are doc those documents are prepared by the Department of the Auditor General. And it depends on what the focus of their performance audit is as to what types of graphs and what types of information is included. This is very standard. Every audit that they do will include information because of the scope that they're looking at for their districts and their fire companies. They do pension funds. There's a variety of different entities that they audit. There's no new information in those first nine pages. It's all information that we're familiar with, SPP scores, our census data from 2010. Um, and they talk a little bit about 
your previous audit and if you had any findings in that previous audit. Which we did Which not. We did not. The previous performance the audit. The pre previous performance audit. <laughs> Thank you. The right. performance audit is different than our local audit. The performance audit is conducted, it depends, every three to six years. It, it just it sort of depends on um, if you're a financially distressed district or if you're a well-performing district. If you're well-performing, you may not have it happen as often. It usually covers multiple fiscal years, and the finances are not always the focus of the audit. And matter of fact, they're very rarely the focus of the audit. The uh, Department of the Auditor General relies on your local auditor to do all of those financial pieces. What they're looking at is they're looking at federal funding, state funding, um, whether or not your um, bus drivers are licensed properly and have the proper certifications. They're looking at your teacher certifications, all those types of things. So we did have two findings this year. Uh, one, the first finding, was related to the health services report. Every year we file a health services report. This finding, I believe, relates back to the fiscal year 1415. Um, which, I'm sorry, Penny, what was 13, it? 13, 14. 13, 13, 14. And that's the year that the Department of Health, and that's who we file this report with, changed the way that you file your information to them. Originally, we would do a paper form. We submitted a paper form. Then partway through that process, the Department of Health said, no, we want you to do this electronically. So we submitted an electronic format. We did have some errors on the electronic format. No, it was the other way around. I'm sorry. We had submitted it electronically first, um, and then we submitted the paper after. The electronic had some errors on it and which we caught when we did the paper format. But what happened with the Department of Health, even though they told us to file the paper format, they processed the electronic format that we had filed. We didn't catch the fact that we didn't get everything we were entitled to, so there was a shortage of $41,218. Since we were made aware of this audit finding, we've corrected that situation. Uh, Dr. Kane, when he was still here, did all the necessary paperwork. We got confirmation from the Department of Health that they have received it and will be processing the 41,000 about two weeks ago. And we should have that in probably four, four to six weeks. Just in time to buy some microphones. <laughs> Just in time to buy some microphones. Um, as a result of that finding, you can see that um, there is an administrative response. We've actually done all the correction and we've put some um, um, things in place so that the business office is reconciling with the um, with the special education department to make sure that that health services report is filed correctly and that the money we receive is accurate. The second finding had to do with fire drills. Public school code mandates that you have one fire drill per month. At the time that this audit took place, that has since changed. Um, you might be aware that now you can substitute a fire drill within the first 90 days with um, a lockdown drill. Or So uh, we actually had a shortage of some fire drills where we did severe weather drills in the winter months. Um, and so we've corrected that problem. Um, we've put together a new format that has a checklist that shows uh, every fire, a fire drill every month. In addition to that, we didn't have a procedure in place for makeup drills. The school code doesn't have a provision in place for makeup drills. And um, the person who was in charge of the fire drills was under the assumption that if you didn't get one in in one month, you could make it up within the first week of the following month. And that is not accurate. So we put together a new procedure. Fire drills are supposed to happen within the first two weeks of school. A makeup day is set for every month, whether or not you need it, just in case, within five days of the fire drill. We still have lockdown drills that we'll be doing, but we're going to be doing 10 fire drills a, a year so that we get all of our fire drills in. And then we also are supposed to do a severe weather drill in the month of March. That's recommended by, I can't remember who it is. Do you remember who recommends that? I'll find out for you and let you know. But that's also recommended by the state of Pennsylvania. Ironically, I think you started to mention this, the law has now changed. It has. So the law has changed. So what we were doing by replacing one fire drill one month with a lockdown, 
the law did change now, so starting this year, you are allowed to do that. In a, in a way, we were, yeah. Okay. Um, and I, as I read in the responses, the state is satisfied with your responses and with the controls you've put in place with regard to both. So that's good. Mich um, Sarah, Mike, Patty, do you have any questions? Okay, well, thank you. So really, this is, um, you know, we're doing our due diligence in that we're being public and transparent and bringing this forward, but the, the important part is you've put whatever controls in place. Great. Super. All righty, well, then let's move on to our final item, which is the plan con for Wayne Elementary. So plan con part G, you probably remember as we've gone through the construction where we add, added the additional classrooms at Ithan and Wayne, Wayne was a plan con project, meaning that the state shares in the cost of the bonds for that. Um, we're to the point now where we need to finalize those plan con documents. So this is plan con part G. Once plan con part G has been approved by the board and submitted to PDE, we can move forward with the remainder of the plan cons so we can uh, get some reimbursement back from the state for the amount of money that we spent out of our fund balance to pay for, for the additions at Wayne. Not fully paid for, but the part the state will reimburse. It'll be a small portion, right. um, but it's still something. Yeah, no, it's, it's great, yes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All righty, Sarah, do you have questions? You do not. Mike? Patty? Okay, great. So thank you for staying on top of that. And, um, you know, at some point you'll just let us know that that plan com money came in, I assume. There'll be a couple more plan cons that we'll need to approve, um, and then there'll, there'll be the final plan con document, and then I will let you know when we receive the funds. Can I? Do you have a sense of what the reimbursement's going to be from the state, or it's still up in the air? I do not know, but I could probably do a rough calculation. So. Um, okay, great. Well, thank you for that. Alrighty, so this is our final public comment. If there's anyone who would like New. to. New oh. business? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so two items? Oh, hang quick. on. Hold on a second. Yes. Sorry. Go ahead. No worries. So two items. I don't know how quick. Hopefully they're quick. Um, the 1718. So as I had mentioned earlier, Michelle, I've been looking at the end of 1718's financial records, you know, that we did during the summertime. Um, I was interested to understand. I realize we're going to move into our audit cycle and but I would imagine sitting here in October, you have a pretty good idea of where we're going to land. I'm assuming there's something that looks like a surplus. How big do we think it is out we're, of interest? We're actually still working working on all of that. There's a couple of pieces that we, we don't have yet. Uh -huh. um, we will have a surplus, but it will be minimal. What minimal meaning under two million? Under a million. Under a million. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to get a sense of where we were ballpark-wise. Right. So there shouldn't end up being a lot of discussion with regards to having to reach our 8%, having to move money into another fund balance or anything like that, right? Well, we should we'll be pretty close. We, we should be pretty close. We'll still have to move some money around. We okay. always have to do that as part of the audit process. Mm -hmm. um, our audit is basically completed for the most part with a okay. couple of pieces that are still outstanding that we're working on. So when do we, I guess I should pull up my little budget calendar and talk about it, but is that on the budget calendar? I didn't the remember close seeing out for it, 17, the close out. It is not. So when do we expect that we'll go through that process? It, it has typically been the month of December when the auditors come back okay. and do an overview for us. So we'll see that before we'll end up okay. getting the 20, oh, good Lord, Draft. 18, nine, no, 19, 20 budget packets that normally come over Christmas. I saw they were December 17th on the schedule. You will get that. Be you will okay. receive information right. about that before. Um, what I've done in the past is for the Finance Committee, I've shared with you a draft. Uh, we look at that at the November meeting. We talk about it a little bit at the November meeting, and then at the December full board meeting, the auditor will, will come and present. Okay. That's what I was, I'm sorry, but that's what I was remembering. I feel like we usually get the draft audit report at the November finance meeting. Okay. So just remembering, yeah, fair enough. A um, while back, we had talked about the idea of having periodic, whether it was quarterly based or just mid-year was fine, 
discussion about projections for the balance of this year that we're in. So this is good. That's a backward look, right? We'll get our packets in December. I guess I'm just asking that it includes some, that'll be December. It's the middle of our school year, roughly, roughly. Projections as to what the rest of the year looks like as a part of our budget packet, right? So projections, fund balance, where we were in the past, where we're going in the future, kind of all wrapped into that budget packet. That's all I'm asking. Um, which is not atypical and just projections are sometimes not in there. So um, my second thing is the bridge. So real quick, I know I, I, I kind of gave a quick heads up. I don't know if there's an answer on it, but since the township has publicly had a, a vote a couple weeks ago, they didn't do it last night. They did it two weeks ago um, where they voted to do the maintenance and repair of the bridge, Matson Ford Road Bridge, our, our brilliant million dollar bridge when we built Radnor Elementary School was a party to the tri-party agreement and in that section 4.1 and like I said on my email last night I don't have the ratified version but I do believe the version I have is the final version it indicates the school districts on the hook for a shared um, a share an equal share with the township on that cost um, and my understanding though I've not seen the total numbers was it's north of six hundred thousand dollars i don't know what the total number is they did so i don't know if anybody was able to look at that do you have I any did. information I at it. for I us it. i believe the total number is five hundred fifty three nine hundred and ninety plus i think they had a i think they had like fifty or sixty thousand dollars in their design fees that were separate from that which i'm hoping they're not going to charge us for but okay fair enough so the what it's already there yeah, I know. Well, design of the work that needs to be done. They had a, they had just like we are with the bleachers. They had an architect firm go out and look at it and do an analysis. Which, okay, so fair enough. So it's five hundred and fifty thousand. So, have you guys looked at that? Was there a conversation? Were we aware of it? I don't remember talking about it during our budget process. I was amazed at how much it was. It was a million dollar bridge, and we're paying almost sixty percent to refurbish it not 20 years later and it's really not like falling down or anything I was shocked at how much it was but apparently that was the lowest responsible bidder and that's the decision they made so um, what does that mean to us certainly I, I don't remember discussing it in our budgeting process and our concerns about our own capital spend especially with the bleacher situation I don't believe we have discussed this in our budgeting process right Okay, so it, it um, was a bit of a... Yes. So I guess at some point we're going to need... They're going to come to us to pay off the bill. Or what's the game plan? So right now, I just had a conversation today with the township manager. They could come to our next facilities meeting next month and at least talk to us about what work is being done if this committee would like to hear that. Oh, I, um, I mean, facilities, we should, right? Yeah. Oh, this is finance, sorry. Yeah, okay, no I'm worries. Yeah, my, no. My, my, that, that well, you got half of the facilities. I know, I got <laughs> so we could do that for facilities next month, and they could share with yeah. us, um, you know, what is what is going on, answer some of those questions about cool. why is the bill what it is. And, and their timing, because I, I confess I don't so know what the, the timing is. The ball is, is moving. Um, their timing is, is, is moving. They've gone out to bid. They're just now waiting for a few. My understanding is they're just waiting for uh, a few bidding documents and plans. Uh, and they are moving forward. So they have, while they haven't given the notice to proceed uh, to the contractor, uh, that could be happening within weeks. I see. So um, yeah, now we the weather will better. also, though, dictate it is a painting sure. job. So um, from my quick conversation today, uh, as much as it is moving forward, or once they get the notice to proceed, um, depending on the weather, they are they are prepared that it may be the spring because you know it's going to be not only temperature sensitive, but the you know. Yeah. Okay. So I would definitely, would you? No, no. I'd be interested to understand it, especially if it impacts anybody from our staff that comes in on the train and uses the bridge. Like, I'd like to understand some of that. Sure. Yep, they could come. They're willing to come That'd November great. facilities. So I'll talk to the facilities chair and see if he could squeeze it in. Yeah, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then Michelle, you just, get him. Yeah. Um, just following up on them, I mean, obviously that will, whatever numbers you're able to get from them as a follow-up to the facilities committee, will have to be incorporated into our budget packet for, well, are they going to be, I guess one question we're going to need to ask them, are they going to be looking for us to pay for this in 1819 and or 1920? Right. And actually, we could do it at, we can talk, I mean, we'll figure it out, straight. we could do it at finance or facilities. So let's look at the agendas for both meetings. Um, and we could, well, we could, we could, we could, if that's okay, we could look at the finance meeting as well. Abs absolutely. But um, I think, I think one of the things that we're going to need to hear from a budgeting standpoint and it, you know, they're used to their, they're used to their calendar year, 
we have ours. So, you know, we might, we might need some flexibility on them with regard to when and how we budget for this, because our fiscal year is, you know, already long approved. Right. And we well, would have to plan for this correct. in some fashion. But I would expect that's going to come out of capital. And we can approve capital at any time out of the capital budget. Well, fair enough. But it's, it wasn't I mean, if in, we're, it's, if we're no. capitalizing $21,000 in microphones, I'm thinking we're capitalizing $200,000 worth of yeah. uh, That's fair <laughs> enough. But so then, you know, we just will need to have those numbers pulled together for mm -hmm. budget discussion. Well, there are, all, there are all kinds of state grants for all kinds of stuff all the time you see in the news, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. at least the one. state stuff. So is there some kind of grant we could apply for to refurbish this thing? I mean, because it's pushing 20 years now, so is it like a antique bridge a classic bridge now yeah, it's, it's, infra it's infrastructure improvement yeah you know it's I mean, an antique all right some kind of can, can i ask one other question and, and i apologize i don't have the tri-party agreement memorized is the um company that owns the corporate park responsible for any portion of this not for the no. because they're probably the largest user of that bridge all yeah, their they, all their employees who use the train line are we con know. i know this because if you're a parent at radnor elementary you're yeah. constantly trying to dodge them. them yeah no, like it's the tri-party agreement, the way it's written, is the construction of the bridge, the maintenance and the repair of the bridge is the responsibility of a shared between the township and the school district. The sidewalks leading to the streets and the roads around it, that stuff for pedestrians mm -hmm. is a shared responsibility, including the corporate park. Okay. At least that's the version that I believe is ratified. All right. Um, well, I'm just, I want to be mindful of the time. Um, so if we have a second, uh, if we have public comment, if there's someone, uh, Dr. Winters, welcome. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, mention that your discussion this evening really underscored the need for the township and the school district to continue to work closer and closer together. It's not only in terms of the expenses for the bridge, but in also in terms of planning for housing trends. And I believe from what I've read, we need to really coordinate that more closely. And I think as more and more, as I see more and more of our taxable land being consumed by nonprofits, that the tax burden on local property owners is going to get greater and greater. And with that comes an increasing um, need for those tax dollars to go to our schools where we have a limited percentage to increase our budgets annually where the township does not have that same ceiling. So I think it's really important that there's some clear understandings of how we're going to operate because as you know, the value of our schools and the values of our properties are closely intertwined. Thank you. And also, I would like to also ask for some further coordination because I think we have many people who have good intentions, but I'm, I sit on the Radnor Education Foundation Board and I know there's a lot of monies that have gone into the auditorium and the programs there. And I also think there's money going into it here and I think we need to think about how we're playing the level, leveling the field across the district because I think People write grants and they receive them, then people receive, ask for other things. And I think it's important that we look at maybe what's the middle school getting, what's the high school getting, what's the elementary school getting, and, and where are our priorities going. And not that they don't all need something, but I think it's, we need to get a bigger picture by looking at all of the assets and all of the um, ways in which the funds are being distributed. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other public comment? Welcome, Mr. Sharing. Thank you. Uh, two things. One is I do think that that agreement should be reviewed again to make sure that we actually are responsible for paying for half. Um, as I mentioned, I, I do think the agreement is dated at this point, clearly, and um, the idea of renegotiating parts of it makes a lot of sense. Then the other thing is that ever since I've been involved in the school board, it seems like there's been a surplus every year. And um, I'm wondering if it would be a good idea, the board thinks it would be a good idea to have some sort of process in place to um, use that money. Maybe it's not a huge amount, 
by some standards. Maybe other people think like, wow, that seems like a lot. Uh, but um, whether, whether or not when this comes through, would the board get a menu of possibilities? Perhaps it goes into funds. Perhaps it goes to pay for something specific like the bridge. I don't know. Um, but trying to get some sort of a process in place so that the administration has some guidance as to what to do with that money might make sense. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Sherry. Welcome, Mrs. Spurtle. Um, a quick comment. I looked up tri-party agreement. And back in... Um, I'm not sure we can hear you. Oh. oh, I didn't know. Thank you. Cindy Spurtle, Wayne. The, um, the question was raised by Elaine Schaefer back in 2017. Bob Zenkowski said it was the responsibility of the township to maintain the bridge. However, he had previously suggested the township asked other two entities to share the costs, and um, it goes on from there. So I think it's a good idea to definitely review the agreement because the township, at least in this article, seems to feel it's their responsibility. And a quote from, from Patty Booker is that we're in the, in the business of maintain, not to teach the children to read, write, if you'll remember that quote. So that's part of that article. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Okay, seeing none, I am going to call this meeting adjourned. Thank you.